Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the split function in Tableau. The split function is one of the most important string functions. And in some cases, Tableau actually does this for you behind the scenes. So I'm going to show you where it does that. And I'm going to show you how it writes the calculation so you can write your own split function to do whatever you need it to. Okay, let's get stuck in. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to Superstore style. I'm going to correct to the American version, which is the second one here in the list. We're just going to let that load up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the order ID to do an automatic split first. Then I'm actually going to walk you through how it works. Then we're going to create our own one. We just let this data set load. Okay, now the data set is loaded. We're pretty much good to go. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll right click on order ID. And what you'll see is that we have this option here to transform and then split. So if we select that, what Tableau will do is it will automatically analyze the field. Then it will see what it can use to split and it will split it by the number of things it thinks are in that particular string. So let me just show you what that means. Let me select split. You'll see that it creates three fields. We'll dig into that into more detail in a second. If we drag order ID onto rows, add all members, uh, then if I hold shift and actually drag all three of these in, it will bring them all in in the same order that I grabbed them. So holding shift, select multiple items, drag them in. You'll see that this is the list that we get. And if I right click on this second split here, and just make this a little larger. We have everything we need on screen. And let me just click inside of the split function there. And then it gives us an example of the formula. So now I can talk a bit more about it. Notice that when Tableau created the split, it created a calculation for us. So in that instance, the reason I know that is because there's a little equal sign here. If you just see where my cursor is next to the hashtag, anytime you see an equal sign, that's essentially a calculated field that's been created. So when Tableau creates these, it puts them in and amongst other calculations for you as if you'd created them. And so the really cool thing here is you can see what Tableau has done. It's essentially using the split function on order ID. You're giving it the hyphen, which is this, the delimiter that you're going to use in this particular case. And then the two is essentially the instance that you're targeting. So in this case, it's targeting the second hyphen and it's going to give us everything up until that second hyphen, as long as it wasn't already split, if that makes sense. So let's have a look at another one. Let's see how different they are. You'll notice that really the only thing changing is the number of characters. And again, it's using the exact same setup. Now, if we look at the description, it says returns a substring from a string. <laughs> Sounds a little bit, bit of a tongue twister sentence that as determined by a delimiter extracting the characters from the beginning or end of the string. OK, so it's essentially a very, very simple function. Let's go ahead and write our own. If I go in here to the product um, and we look for a uh, we look for a field called product name, let me just add this next to the order ID and see how these are set up. You'll notice that yesterday in the find end video, we used a comma. So in this case, I'm going to use a comma as the delimiter for our next data set. Let me open up a new tab just so it's a little bit cleaner bring the rows in, add all members, and now we have all the products. And what I'd like to do is just drag this out. And what I want to do is essentially find everything up until the comma, anywhere where a comma exists. So let's go ahead and create the field, right click, create calculated field. We're just going to highlight this, uh, hold command while scrolling up to make it larger. And then we're going to, on the right hand side, use the split function, then double click that. It puts it around brackets and then now you're pretty much ready to finish writing it. I'll put in the full structure of everything like I'm doing now. And now all we need to do is pretty much define what's going on. So I'm going to look for the first uh, comma. So in order to do that, I'll just put two speech marks. Then inside of that, I'll put a comma. And that's pretty much the function in a nutshell. Now, you'll notice in the other calculation, it actually turned it into an integer for us. It didn't have to, you could have left it as measures and then it would have been a, a sort of a, a sort of a number that might have had fractions, but in this case, it didn't really have anything. So putting the integer function just makes that calculation a little bit more efficient when it's being used elsewhere. That's why that was there. So let's go ahead and call this split on comma and hit uh, enter and then hit apply and click OK. And now we can drag this onto the view and you'll see that in most cases, it's pretty much done the job. So you can see here, 3D systems, Q printer, it's got that up until the first comma, which is perfect. But notice in any case where we don't have a comma, it's just brought everything back in. So the default for behavior for this is not to null out when it doesn't find what it's looking for. It's just to return everything that's there. So you can see here the three ring staple pack, 
That had no comma, so it's just returned everything that was already there. However, this one above it, one quarter fold party design innovations in white envelopes has a comma there, and now we're not getting that second item. What you could then do is you could then uh, duplicate this and you could return everything after an assumed second comma. So basically what this is doing is returning everything that's left essentially um, in this particular case, in the instances where we have a comma. So this is a copy, I'll leave it called that so you can just see the difference. Let's drag this out and now you'll see that you don't have as many fields because for those ones, everything that was already left in the field after the first delimiter is still there and we have nothing else to pass out. Whereas for these other items, there is actually more text there. So having a second split will actually give us the remainder of the text. So if you've ever had a hierarchy that's split out by commas in one field, sometimes this is done on databases to save columns and space. And this is essentially a trick you can use in an analytics tool to sort of split that up. In other cases, sometimes a number of spacings can donate a hierarchy in a data structure. I've seen that as well. So splitting things out can also help you break that hierarchy down a little bit more and help you sort of articulate whatever you're trying to articulate with the visualization a little bit more clearly because you can now navigate the structure that's there by commas. You'll actually notice this set here actually has uh, two commas. So in this particular case, I could just duplicate this one more time and hit edit. And now we can hit three on this one, hit apply and then bring that in. And now we actually have absolutely everything. So um, you can see that this keeps on going. Now we can keep going until we find everything. Um, and essentially that's uh, you know something that's very, very easy to do. But another thing we could do is we can count the number of commas in a piece of text as well. And so I'll show you how to do that in another video. But for now, this is pretty much it for the split function. We're keeping it super simple here. Just wanted to show that to you um, so you could use it. Now, before we go, the other thing I want to do is just show you the custom split capability. The custom split capability essentially allows you to dictate how the split is done. And so this is the automatic way of doing the same thing. Let's say that I use a delimiter for the comma here and uh, click OK. Now you'll notice that nothing happens because this order ID, it calls it number four, basically didn't have a comma. So that was actually not the right thing to do. The better thing to do would to go to the product name and here we can create a custom split. And then uh, you can see here that I'm actually typing on my keyboard before we've done anything. And the thing I wanna target is a comma. And you can actually tell it which columns to bring. So you can tell it the first four columns, the five four column, whatever you want, and it will make sure that it brings that information all across. So if I select all, then it basically looks for all the commas and it essentially splits it out for you. Now, because I haven't called this product name split one and two and three, it will go ahead and use those names when I hit okay. And so we can see here, that in some cases there are actually four levels of the hierarchy. And that's essentially what we've got here. Product name, split, split on comma, and then split on comma number three. If we clear the sheet just by clicking this X here at the top and then bring these four out as they're selected, you'll see the hierarchy in full uh, pretty much repeated there. And now you can start to see how this comes together. And so you can see that it's built out a hierarchy. It's kind of cool. Um, in this particular case, you have ACO press board covers. There's two sort of sizes and then there's three different levels. So immediately you can see the power of using this to break down a hierarchy that was previously just one bit of text. Just again, to remind you that, let me bring that in here. And you can see that these were actually all in the same uh, sort of level of hierarchy. If I actually expand this out, maybe you can see it a little bit more clearly. There we go. You can see that a little bit more clearly. It was just all a bunch of items, but if I remove the product name and I use our new split function, you can see that we actually have a hierarchy to follow. And so that's pretty much it for the video. Um, if you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. If you haven't, uh, drop me a comment below and uh, we'll catch you tomorrow when uh, we'll take on the next function. Take it easy.